Welcome to St. Luke Garland Online. Listen, we're so happy that you made it on this beautiful Sunday morning. Now, do me a favor. Take this time and share this broadcast. Yes, if you're on Facebook, share it with your friends. Let them know that you are currently watching St. Luke Garland Online. Now, if you're on YouTube, subscribe, then share it. Text it, email it, tweet it. Share it on every platform that if, if possible, okay? Because we want the world to know that St. Luke Garland is online. Now, let's get ready for worship. Woo! Good and your mercy and do 
hands, come on, come on. Good and your mercy endureth forever. If you believe it, say it with us, come on. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation say, People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship. If you believe that we serve a good God, come on and throw some hearts and some likes right now. Come on, put in the comments, Lord, you are good. My God, my God, my God, my God. He deserves the glory and the honor on today. It's offering time, St. Luke. Come on, let's give God praise. It's offering time. This is our opportunity to express how we love our Father, how he has provided for us in these times of need. Now, we understand that there are many families up there that are going through and, and many people throughout this pandemic have not had the testimony to say that, you know, uh, it's been all good. But you know what? God is still good through it all, through the good and the bad. Our God has been good. And so what everything he's blessed us with, we ought to take time to share and give and express ourselves through giving. We thank God for the provisions and, and all the things that he's done for us. And so we have three ways you can give on today. We have Givelify. Now you can easily access Givelify by going to our website through stlukegarland.org. 
and look for the Giving tab, and you can access our Givelify there. Second way is you can go through Cash App. Our handle is dollar sign, S-L-A-M-E-C, Souls. Again, we are on Givelify and we are on Cash App. And if you're old school, feel free to just mail an envelope to our church and the address will be provided in the slide following our prayer. Now let's pray. Father, we thank you for everything that you've provided. All that we have needed, your hands have provided, God. And for that, we are thankful. God, we thank you for each and every member, each and every individual watching this broadcast. Thank you for all the sowers, all those who's given, those who has just been, been praying for our church, those who have been sacrificing and giving for, to our church, and we are so thankful for them. Now, those who are unable to give but want to give, God, Lord, touch their needs, Lord. Wherever there's lack, God, provide for them now in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for each and every individual. We love you. We thank you. We praise you in this time. And it's in your name we say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, last week, we pray that you enjoyed our guest preacher, Reverend Samuel Green Jr. He had a powerful word. Come on now, if you haven't seen it, go back and after service and check out his sermon. He had a powerful, powerful, he said, seeing is not always believing. We thank God for that. Again, we thank God for Reverend Samuel Green Jr. from the 7th District uh, being our guest last week. But today... We have our Pastor Jasmine. She is back and she is ready to share a word on this morning right after our sermonic selection.
What a joy it is to be with you this morning, St. Luke. I am excited about the word of the Lord. The Lord has given us a rhema word and let's go ahead and dig in and see what the Lord is saying to us this morning. I want you to join me in the book of Acts as we are moving from the cross to Pentecost. The book of Acts, the 22nd chapter, beginning with the sixth verse. I'm going to read in your hearing the New Living Translation. And it says, As I was on the road approaching Damascus about noon, a very bright light from heaven suddenly shone down around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the Nazarene, the one who you are persecuting. The people with me saw the light, but didn't understand the voice speaking to me. I asked, what should I do, Lord? And the Lord told me, get up and go into Damascus. And there you will be told everything you are to do. I was blinded by the intense light and had to be led by the hand to Damascus by my companions. A man named Ananias lived there. He was a godly man, deeply devoted to the law and well regarded by all the Jews of Damascus. And he came and stood before me and beside me and said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. And that very moment I could see him. Then he told me, the God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and hear him speak. For you are to be his witness, telling everyone what you have seen and heard. What you what are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized. Have your sins washed away and by calling on the name of the Lord. After I returned to Jerusalem, I was praying in the temple and fell into a trance. I saw a vision of Jesus saying to me, hurry, leave Jerusalem for the people here won't accept your testimony about me. Verse 19 says, but Lord, I argued. They certainly know that in every synagogue I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. And I was in complete agreement when your witness Stephen was killed. I stood by and kept the coats they took off of him when they stoned him. But the Lord said to me, go for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. The crowd listened until Paul said that word. Then they all began to shout away with such a fellow. He isn't fit to live. They yelled, threw off their coats and tossed handfuls of dust into the air. If I had to title this sermon this morning, it would be called When the Dust Settles. When the Dust Settles. Let us pray. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word, God. We thank you for the opportunity to hear from you once again. God, we ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus, let your Holy Ghost reign in this place, God. Let it move from here all the way to where your believers, your people, God, your children are listening. God, we ask that you open up our ears and open up our hearts this morning to hear from you. Do it now, O oh God, and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It's in Jesus name that I pray this morning. Amen. So jumping right into the word of the Lord this morning, our text is just a portion of what is considered to be Luke's account of Paul's last trip to Jerusalem. Having just gone through the Lenten season and retelling the account of Jesus's trial and crucifixion, you will notice that the Lucan account of Paul's own trial echoes that of Jesus in how he was handed over by the Jews to the Gentiles. Paul was accused of many things, but he declared his innocence. In the Acts of the Apostles, we read the travels of Paul as he traveled, establishing the first churches in the first century. He traveled declaring that Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior had come. 
Having not all been there at Calvary, there were some Jews that had not experienced Jesus Christ for themselves. And they just simply believed and did not believe that Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah had come. And even Paul, once known as Saul, before his own encounter with Jesus Christ, persecuted the Jews that declared that the Savior had come and he would drag them to their death. And Paul speaks of this in his own testimony and that he is now declaring before the Jews that are swarming around him, having dragged him out of the temple in Jerusalem, having feared that he had brought Gentiles into the temple, which they considered to be unholy. The Jews were not readily accepting of Paul and his message because they feared that he was spreading the word, that the Jewish customs and the laws were no longer to be followed because Jesus Christ had come. Paul went to the temple to begin his purification rituals to show that, in fact, he does observe the Jewish law, but it did not hinder him from believing that Jesus Christ is, in fact, the savior that they had been praying for. And that he had not only come for the Jews, but he had also come for the Gentiles. Uh, they dragged him out of the temple and the city was in such an uproar and beating and attacking Paul that the commander came down with his guards to see what the commotion was all about. And the commander commanded Paul be arrested and the soldiers lifted Paul on their shoulders away from the crowds so that uh, the attack on Paul's life would stop. The commander asked, what crime had this man committed? Some shouted one thing and others shouted another. And since the commander could not sort it out, they decided to drag Paul all the way to the fortress to sort this out. And before they take Paul inside, Paul asked the commander, can he address the crowd? And it's his address that is our text this morning. Paul stood there flat footed, two chains around his body, and he testified about how he was once named Saul and how he was the persecutor until one day he encountered Jesus on his way to Damascus and how he was blinded by his glory that shone all about him. He was blinded so much by the glory that he could not see and had to be led to Damascus. He was called to preach the gospel in that moment. He went from persecutor to preacher. His divine appointment with Christ allowed him to discern God's will for his life. He discovered the purpose and he carried it out with passion. And traveling near and far where Christ led him, Paul preached the gospel. He told the story, he told them his self portrait, trying to explain how he too grew up in Jerusalem and just like each of them, he was educated in the laws just like each of them. And listen, folk will let you be, they'll let you talk as long as you are one of them, as long as they agree with you, as long as you look like you fit in the box that they have made you fit in. Ah, but when you start to say something different, that is when the dust begins to stir. He says in verse 21, but the Lord said to me, go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. The crowd listened until Paul said that word. And then they all began to shout and they listened up until that word. And then they said, I, I, Paul, you have gone too far now. They yelled, they threw off their coats and tossed handfuls of dust into the air. The enemy has begun to throw dust at Paul and it's stirring about him. And Paul isn't the only one. There are some people in your life that has thrown dust at you. The enemy is stirring up dust as we speak and is throwing it in your direction. It does not matter what kind of dust the enemy tries to throw at you and in your direction. We know this much without a shadow of a doubt. By the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we know that dust will settle. Does not matter how dim your outlook may be this past year or how it may look right now in your viewpoint at this very moment. The word of the Lord this morning is that dust 
will settle. The enemy has thrown dust in your life, dust all up and through here where there are remnants of things that haven't been moved for a while and remnants of things that have lingered for far too long. Dust will begin to form and you'll begin to see dust on surfaces of things. And if you know, like I know, there are some places where it's harder to get dust out of stubborn areas and there are areas that it's harder for dust to get rid of. Dust is just swirling around and lingering in your life because the enemy has tried everything to stop you and hinder your vision from fulfilling the purpose that God has on your life. The enemy has thrown dust in your direction to hinder your view. The enemy has thrown dust in your domestic situation. He's thrown dust into your marriage. He's thrown dust into the lives of your children and have caused wedges between children and parents. He's caused wedges between uh, children and their siblings. There has been dust thrown into your financial situation. Bills are stacked one on top of the other and you can't see how you're going to pay them. You can't even worry about uh, ends meet because you can't even see the ends that need to meet. Uh, There's dust everywhere. You are dealing with the lingering dust that has hindered your financial freedom, that has prevented you from being able to give and to sow and to tithe freely because the dust of making tithing the last thing that you do instead of it being the first fruits like the Bible declares that we should do. There is dust swirling and clouding your view, even dealing with with dust in your physical health. Oh, there's dust in underserved communities. There is dust being thrown into generations where younger people are being uh, diagnosed with cancers without any hereditary factors. Doctors aren't even able to speak with hope after dealing with overcrowded, overcrowded hospitals for the last year dealing with this global pandemic. There is dust. The enemy is throwing off their coats and throwing dust in the air. And yet the one thing we know without a shadow of a doubt is that dust will settle. It's now springtime here in Texas. And the thing that we can count on during the spring season is that there will in fact be some storms. During the stormy season, we can experience varying degrees of storms. We can experience a mild shower or we can experience a thunderstorm with the most violent winds and hail and lightning. Storm systems can be so unique in that it can be storming on one side of town in one city. And then in the very next city, just across the street, there will be as if there was no storm in the area at all. Oh, I thought we had storms in Maryland, but there is nothing like the storms that we experience here in Texas. Ah, the impact of thunder and lightning and rain and hail that happen in the springtime of Texas have nothing on the storms that we experienced in Maryland. And not only do we experience these boisterous storms here in the DFW, but in certain parts of North Texas and West Texas over the last year, we experienced what is called a dust storm. Dust storms are formed in between two dominant boundaries, like two fronts. Uh, The dust is swirled up and rotates between the boundaries of intense thunderstorms where rain has not yet fallen. Dirt and loose particles begin to swirl due to high winds that are forming. There can be rain forming in the clouds that have not yet been released to the ground. Ah, but down there on the ground, closer to the ground, the winds are kicking up the dust and a storm begins to brew. The dust is impeding visibility. It's reducing air quality. It's causing respiratory issues. It's causing issues to our ventilation systems. Dust is designed to choke you. It it lingers in the air too long. It can cause your eyes to water. You can't breathe and you begin to gasp for air. 
The one thing that I learned, however, in studying dust storms is this. Dust storms are usually made from large bursts of air that have rushed out before a rainstorm. So when they predict a dust storm, the meteorologist will also tell you to take cover for the rainstorm that is certain to follow. Interestingly enough, uh, children of God, rain settles dust. After everything is thrown at you, after every and after you've encountered every issue after issue, problem after problem, setback after setback, you have experienced disappointments, delays and some denials. Everything has come your way except the kitchen sink. And then you look around and here comes the kitchen sink headed right for you. Uh, God will send the rain to restore you and to settle the dust. Just like he did in the book of Joel, when the locusts destroyed everything, God sent the rain. The Bible declares in Joel 2, beginning at verse 23, that the rain he sends demonstrates his faithfulness. It says there in Joel 2, once more, the autumn rains will come as well as the rains of spring. The threshing floors will again be piled high with grain and the presses will overflow with new wine and olive oil. The Lord says, I will give you back what you lost to the swarming locust, the hopping locust, the stripping locust and the cutting locust. I, it is I who sent this great destroying army against you. Once again, you will have the food you want and you will praise the Lord, your God, who does these miracles for you. Never again will my people be disgraced. He is sending the rain to settle the dust. My God, he is sending the rain to settle the dust. And when the dust settles, here's what we will find. Uh, when the dust settles, here's point number one, your purpose is revealed. It is clearer when the dust calms down. You, you see, although Paul was in custody the next morning, they brought him before the Jewish council where he had to once again defend his faith. They argued amongst themselves over what it was that Paul was preaching. They feared for his life so much they took Paul back into custody this time for his own safety. They plotted to kill Paul and Paul this time was guarded by 200 soldiers that would help him get out of town. And there the dust continued to follow him. They kept him in custody first for five days, then for two years. And by the whole time Paul was in custody, he was preaching gospel, preaching the gospel from the prison. He was preaching from the least to the greatest persons that he encountered. His purpose was revealed when the dust settled. Jesus called him to preach the gospel, not only to the Jews, but to the Gentiles. And here Paul finds himself being imprisoned by the Gentiles preaching just as Jesus had called him to do. And then point number two, when the dust settles, your passion is restored. We all have a duty to continue to fight. When the dust settles, despite being wrongfully in prison for years, Paul did not let the dust that the enemy was throwing at him to change his passion for preaching the gospel, even though he encountered many enemies. When you know what it is that you have been created to do and you lean into the gifts that God has given you, there is a passion that cannot be quenched with a little dust. If anything, your passion is restored every single time that you encounter an enemy because you know that you are on the right track if the enemy is throwing dust at you. Then point number three, your path is released. Come on and put your path is released. It's not the way in which Paul thought it would happen. Ah, but the dust that was thrown his way had led him to live in Rome and, con and continue to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. 
You see, in Acts 28, we find that Paul has now made it to Rome because although he was found to be innocent, he appealed to Caesar. So they brought him from Jerusalem to Rome where he was a citizen by birth. And there, once he got to Rome, he was released. And when he arrived, they released him and they said they wanted to hear what he believes. The Gentiles asked Paul, well, what is it that you believe? And there in Rome, he explained and testified about the kingdom of God. He tried to persuade them about Jesus from the scriptures. He used the law of Moses preaching from morning to evening about how the Messiah had already come. And Acts 28 verse 31 says, and it concludes the book of Acts, telling us that Paul lived in Rome and he welcomed all who visited him, boldly proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Christ Jesus, and no one tried to stop him. In chapter 22, he was just praying in the temple and was persecuted. But by chapter 28, he was freely preaching about the kingdom of God, and no one tried to stop him. His path was released. Jesus had called him to preach and told him that he would preach and be sent out to preach not only to the Jews, but to the Gentiles. And that's exactly where we find him at the end of the Acts of the Apostles. When the dust settles, you may find yourself in a different place. You may find yourself in a different mindset. You may find yourself in a different locale, but you also will realize that you are in the right place at the right time. When the dust settles, what will your life be like when this is all over? When the dust settles, what will it be like for you? When the dust settles, uh, where will your passion take you? When the dust settles, what will God have done through you? I feel a fresh wind. The rain is coming. God is coming to settle the dust that has been thrown into your life. And what are you going to do when the dust settles? Come on and praise God right where you are. Come on and thank him for when the dust settles. You may be watching this morning. You don't know about this Jesus that Paul proclaimed so boldly. And you don't know about this Jesus that I preached about, but I'm offering you the invitation this morning. And you may be saying, Pastor, what is the invitation? What is all of this that you're talking about? And I'm so glad that you asked. Listen, Jesus Christ came so that we could live an eternal life with him. And I'm asking you this morning just to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he has already come. That he came for your sins and that he is coming back again one day soon. I want you to pray this prayer of faith with me. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner and I am sorry. Come into my heart now. Clean me up, oh God. I believe that you were born for my sins. I believe that you died. And I believe that you rose and are coming back again one day soon. God, give me the confidence to say, if anybody asks if I am saved, I'll be able to declare without a doubt that I am saved, I am saved, I am saved. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, come on and let us know in the comments and let us celebrate with you. We want you to go ahead and email us at info at stlukegarland.org so that we can walk out this salvation walk with you. Or you may be watching and you're saying, Pastor, I've already given my life to Christ at some point in my life, but I want to join the church. I want to get in the right fellowship so that I can walk out this life with you and be a part of this body of believers. If that is you this morning, I'm encouraging you to let us know in the comments or go ahead and send us an email at info at stlukegarland.org and we will be so glad to help to welcome you into our church family. 
God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for what you are doing in the lives of those who have heard the word. And now let's go out and live the word. When the dust settles. Whew, wow, when the dust settles. My God, Pastor Jasmine, that's a word. My God, Whew, I felt the power. I felt the power in that message. We thank God for you, Pastor Jasmine. And sharing that message. We cannot wait to hear more. We thank God for you. For those, again, who has, have shared that prayer of invitation, who have accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, don't forget to mention in the comments or send an email to info at stlukegarland.org. We would love to receive you and walk with you through this journey. Now, again, if you want to be a member, an e-member, I know you may not be in the Garland area. You may be in another state or another country. You could still be a part of our family. And if you're interested, please feel free, send us an email or mention in the comments, but email us at info at stlukegarland.org. Listen, we are so thankful for you being a part of our worship experience today. Now, we'll be back next week, but also Tuesday night at 7 p.m. On Facebook and YouTube, we have our Tuesday night conversations. Pastor Jasmine launched our new Tuesday night series. Listen, you cannot miss it this Tuesday. Be there. We'll be back. I'm thankful I had a little break. I had a commitment to be with my daughter. Daddy made a promise. You know how daughters are, so Daddy had to keep his promise and be there for her, our daughter, Gracie. And she is so thankful that you allowed Daddy to spend time with her. So we praise God. But Daddy will be back. Uh, with Pastor Jasmine, Pastor Amos will be back, and Gracie will be fine. <laughs> All right, listen, I can't wait to see y'all next week. Please tune in, share this, join on, follow us, subscribe. Make sure you let us know that you are with us. We thank you. See you next week. And I am not alone. The comfort turns with me. Seems long, real long, real long, real long Morning shall come quickly, yeah oh, oh, oh. And wherever you go, I will go And whatever you say, I will say that you